Yo, welcome back. So today I'm back at my favourite place where I've done the earth rod. Um, something very different today. So you'll see by that tiny little box, I've got a box of tricks with me. Now that is actually a MFT calibration box. So something I wanted to touch on was calibration. Um, I saw that QTech done this. They sent one out to me, so thanks for that. And I've also got a, uh, a cool discount code coming up as well. So um, yeah, stay tuned to the end of the video for that. Now, calibration, obviously your MFT needs to go off and get a calibration certificate every single year. But what a lot of people don't know on your NIC inspection or a consultant might pull you is you're actually supposed to continually measure and see if your MFT or your testers are accurate. And a lot of people do it with this. So this is a cow card, you can get them online for like 20 quid. And this is just got resistors in it basically. It's got a, a range of 0.5 mega ohms to 20 mega ohms and 0.25 ohms to five ohms. And you just, yeah, yeah, test between the common and the different contacts and that will prove you know your tester now that's all well and good and that thing does work a charm however it doesn't do everything so what QTech have is a little calibration box which I'm gonna plug in we're gonna go and calibrate my QTech tester see how accurate it is and um, yeah obviously see if it's up to scratch and if it's fit for purpose so yeah let's get it out let's get it plugged in and see what happens this is our little box. I can't believe how small it is. When I first saw this, like online, in the case it's in, I thought it'd be massive, and that's why I've done that little shot in the intro to show you the scale of this thing, because it is tiny, that's my hand. Anyway, you've got a few things here. So you've got your mains input there, that's obviously gonna get the thing powered up, wireless lead, and then you have the test socket, which will do RCD testing, you can, um, see the the test current here and what time it should be so it should be 38 milliseconds and then here you can also do a loop test and you can set it to well i don't know what local is but you can set it to one ohm 100 ohm so you can test your loop there as well that's how you change between those and then it's also got the same settings as the cow card you know it goes between two ohms one ohm 0.5 and then you've got your common and again common 0.5 mega ohms two mega ohms and 200 mega ohms so it's really going to test all of the all of the functionality of the tester and yeah just allow you to easily see if it's accurate now this is tiny it's literally a diddy little thing but it's great for yeah you know checking accuracy making sure you're up to date and um yeah if you had one of these on the company and had a lot of testers a bit like the company i work for it's just great to yeah prove prove the madness of the testers let's see see what it's saying get it plugged in right so i've got my tester set up three leads in there it's plugged in there obviously plugged in we're on RCD mode, so I'm doing one times at 30 milliamps. I'm just going to press test. Should see the 30 milliamp light up. Maybe just a 15. No, 30 milliamp. 36 milliseconds. So it says it should be 38 plus or minus one millisecond. So we're at 37. So I think that's pretty accurate, to be fair. I'm happy with that. Um, let's do a loop test. So let's just double check because. I want to make sure I'm not messing any of this up. I thought loop impedance tests. Uh, the FC2000 provides a facility to check the accuracy of the loop. Okay. Right, let's flip onto loop and let's go local. Yeah, for loop impedance test plug in and tarry that the usual way. This measure is value recorded. Right, okay. So 0.48. We then want to add on one ohm. So it should be 1.48, yeah. And then we wanna go in the middle position and it should be 99, yeah. Out of the range of the tester, I suppose, but maybe, uh, no, we don't wanna do that. This would lead, we go to a high resolution maybe? No, no, that's gonna make it worse, isn't it? Um, 99, so we can only assume, but if we go to one, Bosch 1.48 and we go here, yeah, 4.7 and then 1.48. So again, that has proven that it's accurate, you know? It's um, it's happy days, 1.48. Go local, the local air fault loop is 0.47. We then add on one ohm and it goes to 1.48. So that is sweet. Now I can get rid of this 
probably unplug it and we can do the um, do continuity and insulation resistance right so I've got my tester on on continuity I'm gonna go common um, with that and then we'll go we'll go brown in 0 0.5 let's see what we get 0.8 it's not a great start is it um, I haven't nulled though my leads what does it say no, your leads probably. With the leads connected to the instrument in the normal way, one lead should be connected to the null terminal in the continuity range and the other lead connected to the... Ah, okay, cool. Common and common. Right. It's null. No one. Right, there we go. Now let's try it. So it should be 0 0.5. 0 0.50. Let's go to 1 ohm. 1 ohm. Let's go to 2 ohms. 2 ohms, right, happy days. Let's go over to insulation resistance now. Uh, common in 0.5. Let's go over to insulation resistance. Um, what does it say? Uh, it can be checked at all voltages. So let's go, let's go big 1000. Uh, 0.5 mega ohms, that's correct. 0.5. Let's go 2 mega ohms. Two mega ohms, lovely. Let's go 200 mega ohms. 200. There we go. She's passed. She's accurate. That is uh, that's all of the tests, to be honest with you. I think you can go a little bit more in depth and do 15 milliamp and 150 milliamp. I just did 30, to be honest, because that's all you're really going to be knocking out most of the time. Um, loop was cool. Continuity was cool, and insulation resistance was cool. So yeah, this is the FC2000 um, checkbox. So dead handy, man. Nice little small thing. You can sit in the van, sit in the test kit, and it just continually proves. Let's have a look at the terminology. Measuring reference for ongoing accuracy. So that's what they want. They want uh, measuring reference for ongoing accuracy. It's also got some tips here. A separate test record sheet should be kept for each test instrument. Each test should be repeated three times to establish the initial test value for each particular instrument. Okay, I didn't do that. <laughs> but value obtained over the free test should be similar within the instrument manufacturer tolerances. The average value over the free test should be recorded on the instrument test record. Um, yeah, so that is it. Um, it then just tells you how to do everything. Uh, you saw me referencing that. But yeah, nice and simple, and uh, she's up to scratch. Now, the reason I asked you to send me out this uh, FC2000, to be fair, the reason they've done that is because I'm a massive nerd, and I just wanted to, <laughs> to mess around with it and my tester. But the reason for this video is I'm excited to announce that in collaboration with QTech and Express Cal, I have a discount code. So, although continually measuring the accuracy of your test instruments is a great thing to do, you still need a calibration certificate every year. It runs out, you need another one, um, and that's just the way it is. Uh, anyone with a multifunction tester will know this. But yeah, with ExpressCal and QTech, I have a discount code on all calibration. So, first of all, ExpressCal are experts at what they do. You send your tester out to them, they calibrate it, they send it back. Easy as that happy days so i've got code residual which will give you 15 percent off your calibration so yeah go on the website fill out your information and enter code residual and it'll give you 15 percent off so yeah not only is it super easy to do send it off they calibrate it send it back you get a certificate you're gonna get 15 percent off using code residual so make sure you do that and that was the real purpose of this video as well as geeking out for 10 minutes uh, with the fc 2000 but let us know in the comments as well do you continually measure your the accuracy of your instruments i only got a cow card a couple of years ago because my nic assessor gave me a grilling uh, for the company that i worked for i was i was doing the assessment that year and um, i didn't have one on me so yeah i got a cow card and i've used it a handful of times to be honest with you more so when i'm getting funny readings however you know we should strive to be better and i think with the fc2000 i'll regularly check my test equipment you know especially if it's been not used in a while or you know i've dropped it or something like that it's a great shout to just prove that and especially if you've got a lot of testers you know just to check your madness check that everything's all right 
calibrate and uh, yeah, make sure you're calibrated. But yeah, when you do have to do the official calibration, use Express Cal, they'll sort you out and uh, make it super, super easy for you. Hopefully you found this video interesting, maybe learned something. I certainly have found it interesting. You can get the FC2000, the QTEC test equipment, all that sort of stuff from Loadout. I'll put the links to that below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.